I'm Kalika. I'm a motion designer and character animator based in the New York City area. And I'm going to show you how to animate a Photoshop digital collage, okay? So let me show you the Photoshop file that we're going to be working with today. I designed it last night. And as you can see, there's um, some layer masks happening. There are um, some effects. I used some drop shadows and I've labeled each of my layers. This is really important when you're preparing to animate something in Adobe After Effects. This tutorial is for people who love Photoshop, who are pretty good at working with it, who maybe have opened After Effects a few times, or it's been a while since you've opened After Effects. Um, it might be that you are brand new to the software. I'm gonna walk you through what all of the main windows are, but it would be helpful if you had some experience with the software at this point. Um, let me show you how to download the files that we're gonna be working with. So here we go. And these files are on Google Drive. So if you go to the description for our video and then you go over to our um, bit link that's in the description, you'll be able to download those files and you'll find them on my Google Drive. So inside of our folder there, you can just download, there's like a zip file in it. And the zip file contains everything you'll need for this project. There's no fonts that you're going to need. There's no additional files. Nothing is linked outside. It's all contained in that one folder. So it's called Kalika FX underscore AE collage. And you're just going to right click on it and you're going to choose download from the Google Drive option that it gives you. OK, so right here. Okay, and once you download it, you do need to unzip it on your computer, desktop, or Windows Explorer before you'll actually be able to work with it. So let me close this up and I'll show you what's inside. So it's really, really simple. I basically just uh, created my folder structure that I tend to use on most of my professional projects. And we've got AE projects. That's where I save anything coming out of After Effects. I've got my assets, which is where I have my layered collage file. And then I have my exports, okay? And we're gonna populate these folders as we work today. If you have any problems downloading the files, please drop it into the chat or you can type it into our um, comments if you're watching it after the fact. All right, cool. So make sure you download those files from the bit link that's in the description for this video because you're going to need that if you're going to play along. Now you are welcome to just watch as I do it, but you'll learn a lot more and be able to get um, get more out of it potentially by doing it with me. Okay, now let me show you guys how this Photoshop file was put together and some of the things that I did in order to um, get it ready to animate in After Effects. Now, the thing is, when you're working on stuff for After Effects, you kind of got to simplify your Photoshop files. Otherwise, you're not going to end up uh, being able to do as many things once you get into After Effects. You don't want to simplify it too much. For example, you don't want to merge everything down. But if you have anything in groups, if you have, um, if you have smart objects embedded in there and so on, then it does make it a lot more heavy for After Effects to process. So as you can see here, we've got these little icons next to some of my layers, and that means that they are smart objects. And when they're smart objects, it does make it heavier for the software to process. Okay, so in this Photoshop file, I basically just changed any of my smart objects into ordinary layers, simply by right clicking the smart object layer and choosing convert to layers. Now, you're not going to have to do that if you are, um, if you're working with my files, because my files are ready to go. Okay, so, <clears throat> 
you should have your After Effects open. And I'm just going to go down to my After Effects. There we go. Now I'm working with After Effects version 2021. This should work with any After Effects version starting with 2013. So don't worry about that. Cool. So in After Effects, the workspace that I like to work with, which is to say the configuration of windows that I like to work with, is called the standard workspace. So let's just reset that really quick. You're going to go to the window menu, you're going to go to workspace, and you're going to go to standard. Okay, now if you're already in the standard workspace and your After Effects doesn't look like mine, what you need to do is go down to where it says reset standard to saved, and then that is going to reconfigure your windows to the originally programmed settings. So now we have everything arranged the way it was in the original program settings. Now, um, your preview window might be stacked with your effects and presets. Alternatively, it might be in between here. And you can just grab any tab by dragging its name and just go up like this to drop it between different windows. You can drag it to one side and now it's going to drop it in between the composition viewer and these other windows. You can resize just by hovering in the dark valley between windows and just move that on over and that will change the size of your windows, okay? Alternatively, if you want to tear something off, just click the little stack that's listed next to the, um, the name of the tab and just choose undock panel and you'll end up with your panel all by itself. And then I can just drop it back in if I want to. See? Now friends, if you are um, just joining me now, make sure you have After Effects, Photoshop, and Media Encoder open. And in the description, I do have a link to some work files, which are, we're gonna be using for today's lesson. All right, wonderful. So whenever I'm about to import a layered Photoshop file, what I do is I make sure that I first create an empty composition with the settings that I want for my next import, okay? It's sort of like resetting your preferences in a way, um, and that's because After Effects will import any new stuff at the same settings that you used for the last stuff you imported, or the last composition you changed the settings for. Now, in terms of what a composition is, remember it's a container that has all of your um, has all of your layers in it. So it'll have audio, it'll have video, photos, layered Photoshop files, and so on. And in order to create a composition, you can either click this giant one-time use button that goes away once you create a composition, or you can go to the composition menu and choose new composition. Now, when you create a new composition, you have this composition settings window that opens up. And up at the very top, you will notice it says preset custom for me. Yours might say something different. Now, if you click on the little tiny arrow next to the preset name, you can choose from a variety of different presets. The one we're gonna use for this project is actually HDTV 1080 24, okay? So be really careful and make sure you're choosing this exact preset because otherwise when we import our next thing, it's gonna come in differently. So I choose that and down at the bottom, we have a duration. And this is set in time code. So remember, hours is the first field here, then you have minutes, then you have seconds, and then finally you have frames. And we want this whole thing to be like, I don't know, maximum of 20 seconds. So if I do 20.00, that's 20 seconds and zero frames, okay? making sure that my frame rate is set to 24. Now, when you choose that preset, the cool thing is that it fills in everything up to the frame rate. It fills in your width, your height, the shape of your pixels, and the number of frames you're playing back per second, okay? And I'm gonna set this to half, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now I have this empty composition that's at the settings that I want, for the next thing that I'm going to import. 
I don't need this composition anymore. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna hit the backspace or delete key to just get rid of it. Bye bye. Okay? Fabulous. So we're gonna import our layered Photoshop file next. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can import a layered file. We're gonna choose the one that's the easiest to animate, which is to say, we're gonna assume that our design is final. Like we're not gonna go back into Photoshop and mess with it, it is done. If we're gonna go back into Photoshop and mess with it, and supposing we change the dimensions of the layers at this point, um, it will cause some funkiness in After Effects because After Effects is referencing or talking about your files from Photoshop. So we're gonna go to File Menu, Import File. Okay, so remember, the reason why I'm so particular about my file organization is because After Effects is referencing or talking about my uh, Photoshop file rather than embedding or eating it. It's kind of like an HTML file that way. If you ever tried to open a web page offline and you're like, wait, there's like a bunch of stuff missing. And that's because the HTML file references photos that are on a server somewhere. And if you don't have access to the server, it doesn't know what to show you. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna just go to my desktop and locate my Photoshop collage assets. And there's my PSD. Now, if you're working on a Mac, there's this silly options button in the lower left corner that is off by default. So yours will look like this which I think is just horrible. It's just not useful at all because you need those options. You need to be able to look at your options that are listed below here and make sure they're set properly because there are no less than five different ways that you can import files in After Effects. I mean, you can import the whole thing merged down as if it was a JPEG. You could import a single file with, um, like just one layer on it. You could import that layer as having the same dimensions as your composition. You could import that layer as just being cropped to the layer, or you could import the composition itself. And there's a couple ways to do that. It's really quite mind boggling. So we need to make sure that we're choosing correctly. So make sure that options button is on. So you have all this stuff below. And you go to import as, and you wanna make sure you're choosing composition retain layer sizes. And this is the easiest to animate, but it also assumes that you have final artwork where the size of the layers are not gonna change. Okay, so make sure you choose that. Now, down below here, these are these horrible checkboxes that turn on automatically. So if you're the type of person who does like versions of different files, like version one, version two, version three, it will automatically turn on the sequence option and then it'll play back all your versions for you a frame at a time. So make sure these are turned off as well when you're importing a layered file. Okay, so composition retain layer sizes and I hit open. <clears throat> then we get this window, which I call the are you sure window. And it says import kind, composition retain layer sizes. That's correct. And then here where it says layer options, okay, I'm going to choose editable layer styles. And that's because I do have some like drop shadows and stuff on these layers. And I want to make sure that if I want to turn them off, I can. And I could do that right within After Effects. Alternatively, if you did do the merge layer styles into footage, you'd have to turn them off in Photoshop, save, and then it'll update, hopefully. No, we're gonna do the editable layer styles. And then I hit okay. Now this is like super important stuff, right? We just imported our layered file and I wanna make sure you guys got this. So if you have any questions, please just type it into the chat as soon as it comes into your head because there is that delay between my stream and you guys actually getting it. Okay. <clears throat> so just type that in if you have a question or if you're watching the replay, type it into the comments. So this next part trips people up a lot. And this next part, it's I think it's because After Effects has like a design flaw in terms of user interface, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, if you took this composition and you dragged it down here into the empty timeline, you would think it would open that composition, but it doesn't. 
it basically sticks it into another composition, kind of like, have you ever gotten one of those things in the mail where it's like one envelope inside of another envelope and you're like, wait, why did they do this? Okay, so if you have like one envelope inside of another envelope, that's what this does, it's horrible. So if that happens to you, just undo, edit undo or command Z, and then what you gotta do is you double click. Okay, so double clicking on the composition will load it into your timeline and into your composition viewer. Now I'm gonna change my composition view to fit. All right, great, so now I can see it really nicely. When it's set to fit, the cool thing is that regardless of what size my comp viewer is, my image is just gonna scale and get bigger or smaller depending. Okay, so I have a particular order that I wanna animate these things on. I'm really uh, kind of picky about how I want this. And that's because I thought about it. I went through my layers and I was like, okay, this would probably look best if I animated it in this particular order. Um, now, right now in the timeline, you can see all of these bars, right? And on the right-hand side of the timeline, those bars are called layer content bars. And like the simplest kind of animation you could ever make would be to stagger those bars. So let me show you how that works. Let me just save this really quick. File, save as, save as. And I'm gonna go to my good old folder there, which on a Mac, it's nice. It actually takes you to the thing. And then here, and then I'm gonna save my After Effects project into the AE Projects folder, and I'm just gonna call this Collage Project, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate for you how you could create just like a really, really simple animation with just the layers popping on. So all you would do is you would take these layer content bars and you would stagger them. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So. By staggering them, I mean you would offset when they start. Now, how can you tell when they start? Well, I'm glad you asked. What we need to do is bring up what's called the in column. So if you right click where it says layer name or source name, and you go over to columns and you choose in, then you get this in column, which is really, really handy. And if you either shorten the start of the layer, see this little double-ended arrow that shows up when I'm hovered over one end, of the layer content bar. Or if I shift the layer by dragging it like this and see how I get like this little ribbed area, almost like a grip, so I can move the layer content bar back and forth. If I do either of those things, this in column changes, okay? So I'm just gonna offset these by like, I don't know, like half a second each. And since we're working at 24 frames per second, I'm gonna have these come in at about a half second each, and that might be too slow. We'll see. So that one's at 12, and you can also change when these layers come in by just clicking and typing. So I could do this one, I'm just gonna move my layer in time right here, and I'm just gonna type in 24. And if this time code math is bothersome, you can always switch to frame counting instead by just going over to your time count uh, sorry, your time code display in the upper left corner of your timeline. And on a Mac, you can hold the command key down. On a PC, you can hold the control key down and it's just gonna switch you over. And that makes it a little easier for the math, okay? So 24, then 36, hitting return or clicking okay. And then this guy um, would be like, what, 48 and Anyways, so let me, let me just go through and type these in. And I just uh, accidentally animated this layer, which was supposed to just stay at zero. Okay. So it, when you're working in After Effects, it can be helpful to have a number pad so that you can type in numbers quickly. I find that that tends to be a lot faster than if I have to just use the top number bar on my keyboard. Okay, so was everyone able to find that in column? If you have any issues, please just type them into the chat. Or if you're watching it later, type it into the comments. Um, so I think if I do 48 plus 12, nope, 
<laughs> in some areas of After Effects, it will actually do the math for you, but not this one. So I'm just gonna have to wing it with a little math here, okay? So this is with just my um, layer content bar starting up. And if I hit the space bar to play it back, you can see that it just sort of pops on, which isn't terrible, but that's not really what we want. Let me play it back one more time. So in my preview window, I'm gonna have it set to play from start of range. This way it always rewinds before it plays it back. So here we go. And you see how it just pops on? I mean, it's kind of giffy look or jiffy looking. I'm not a fan. So I'm gonna revert to my last saved version of the project. And that's just gonna take all of my layer content bars back to their start, okay? And yes, I do use the um, layer content bar strategy to initially time my layers, but not like, not if it's an actual animation. I'll, I'll explain in a moment. So I want certain things to happen at certain points in time. And I want the whole thing to start with just my paint and my background, okay? So just the paint and the background, all right? And then I want um, the circle to show up next. So let's get up the circle and the shadow, so hole and shadow. I want those to come up next. And I'm gonna have those show up right around like, um, let's do one second. So it's gonna be kind of a slow start, okay? So again, right clicking on any columns I don't need. And you see this column with the blending modes and the track mat, I'm gonna change that by clicking toggle switches and modes. And this brings me up my switches column, which is a little bit easier, especially when you, we start working with our transform animations, it allows us to see the data. If you are in your blending modes column, you'll also see it, but then you also have all this extra stuff that you might accidentally change. So I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, so I have these guys and I'm also gonna bring up my in column. And this is really for like basic timing. And remember, you can always change this time code to frames by holding the command key on a Mac and clicking or control key on a PC. So I'm gonna have these guys start at 24, okay? So I have the shadow and the hole, and I'm gonna change their color because they belong together. They both come on at the same point in time. After I have the hole come on, I'm gonna have the fence come on. And the reason why is because I cropped a bunch of other layers to have that section missing. And that's because I was using like kind of a funky blending mode. And when there were layers underneath of it that weren't cut off, it looked kind of weird. So I'm gonna have that one come on next. And I'm gonna have that come on a little bit more quickly. So maybe like around 32 frames. So again, I just clicked right here in the in column and then I'm, whoops, right here. Yeah, so I did, uh, so I clicked in the time this time and I said 32 and now I have this layer and I wanna start it right there. Now, when you're working in After Effects, you can turn on and off snapping by starting to do something, then holding the shift key down and then that will create a snapping. So I'm just gonna hold shift and now see it like snapped. Now you don't wanna, you usually don't wanna hold shift before you start. I usually start and then start moving the thing, then holding shift and then it snaps. Cool, so let's see what this looks like so far. Paint, whole thing, okay. And that's not too bad. And you can see how it's playing back by just keeping an eye on your info window in the upper right hand corner. So, all right. And I am gonna add some keyframes to all this stuff so it's not gonna be so poppy. Next, after the fence, I'm gonna have the texture thing show up. So the texture thing, which is actually called texture thing, is this little chunk of wood. And I want that little chunk of wood to show up like right around here, like at about 44 frames. So um, 
but I, I don't want it to just pop on. We'll get to that later. Anyway, so I'm just gonna move texture thing to be right there. And then after a texture thing, I'm gonna have the water thing show up. And the water thing is like this interesting color. Um, it's basically like a top-down view of a vacation paradise place. So I'm gonna have that come up a little bit after. So right here is where water thing shows up. And then I'm gonna have the sticker come in and the sticker's gonna come in at like 75, I guess. I think that should work. So here's my sticker and I'm just moving it. And look, I'm just holding it with one hand and then I hold the shift key and it pops. And then finally, I'm gonna have the lady show up. Now, let me take a look at the time. Yeah, let's, um, I have something really interesting planned for the lady. So instead of using the lady FPO or for placement only layer, we're actually going to use lady matte and lady no matte. And I'm going to explain how to use those right now. So in Photoshop, you may have noticed that I was using a fair amount of layer masks, right? So the layer masks in Photoshop are right next to whatever it is that you're um, designing. In After Effects, your layer matte is above, okay? So it's the same concept as a layer mask in Photoshop, except it is above, okay? So similar to how with this particular layer, when I look at the matte, it's just white circle on black, and our end result is this lady cut out of her background into a circle, we're gonna do the same kind of thing in After Effects using the layer mask method. It's, it's conceptually difficult, but executionally easy. So you can handle it, it should be fine. So just a little bit later, and this is gonna be like kind of the icing on the cake, like after everything's done, this is gonna happen. So I'm gonna take the lady no matte layer and, layer and making sure that it's below, right? Let's just color code these. I'm gonna make them red so it's really obvious they belong together. And see down at the bottom, there's this very poorly designed button that says toggle switches slash modes. If I click on that, it brings up my blending modes and track mat column. Now if I take the lady no matte layer and I change none, to Luma Matte, Lady Matte, then it's going to punch out the lady from that matte, okay? And just as if you were in Photoshop and you unlinked your lady photo and the matte, we're actually gonna be able to move the lady independent of her matte, almost like, like coming through as a window, all right? Any questions about that? If you have any confusion surrounding layer masks versus layer mats in After Effects, please just type it into the chat or the comments. So going back to After Effects, I always forget that I can do this number. Okay, so going back to After Effects, now I have my lady mat and lady no mat, and I'm just gonna move them so that they happen last. Okay, and let's just rewind to the beginning and play back our rough timing. And that's not too bad, okay? And I think we're ready to start adding some animation to this. So I'm gonna rewind. We began with this paint, okay? And the paint is on screen for like a whole second. So I'm gonna have the paint just gently fade on over, yeah, I'm gonna have it gently fade on over white. I think that'll look nice. So to bring up the opacity property of two options, one is to swivel open your layer, swivel open, transform and locate opacity. Or for any of these properties that you see here, and a property is simply a detail about a layer, right? Because we're telling stories and stories are based on detailed descriptions, right? So 
you can just remember the acronym PARTS. P for position, A for anchor point, R for rotation, T for opacity, and S for scale. Which means that if I just wanted to bring up one of those properties, I could do so just by hitting the corresponding letter on my keyboard. So P brings up position, A anchor point, R, T for opacity. And the opacity, I'm going to start it at zero. Okay, so I change this uh, property slider. See this little blue guy? I'm going to change it all the way down to zero. And I want to start the animation process right at zero frames, okay? So with my playhead, which is this guy right here, tells us when we're located in time, remember? With that playhead right at zero, I'm going to turn on the animation process. And I do that by clicking this little stopwatch. Now remember, you only click the stopwatch the one time. And then ever after that, if you um, want to make changes to that property that are shown as a progression, as an animation, all you got to do is change the value, okay? Now with some of our properties like position, scale, and so on, we do have the option of using interactive controls and tools, but for opacity we don't. So I'm going to have this fade on over the course of maybe like 16 frames. So this little diamond here, that showed up when we turned on the stopwatch, and that is a keyframe. And remember, a keyframe sticks a value to a time. So this keyframe, if I just hover off and hover back on, I get this handy tooltip that says that at zero time, this keyframe is worth 0%. And at 16 frames, I'm just going to um, hover my mouse over this 0% and just drag that bigger. Okay, so now I have a fade up. Okay, but then everything else just kind of pops on, right? And that's sort of unsubtle. So I want this next thing to, um, I think I want it to fade on as well, but I, let's see what we can do about it, okay? And I, the way that I want it to fade on, I don't want the hole in the shadow to come on separately because I think that that could look really weird. So I want it to fade on as a unit. Now, whenever you want things to fade on as a unit, but you actually have separate layers, you should probably group them. And in After Effects, grouping is called pre-composing. Matter of fact, if you import a layered Photoshop file that has groups, it comes in as like a little mini composition inside the current one. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I take the hole in the shadow and I'm going to just hold shift while I select one and that, so click the first, shift click the second, and then I'm going to go to the layer menu and choose pre-compose and that again is like grouping. And I like to give it a name and my buddy Heather, who I've been teaching for a few years now, I um, got in the habit from her of starting off my pre-composition names with PC dash. This way, when it comes into the project window, I know at a glance that it's a pre-composition. So PC dash whole, okay? And I'm not going to adjust, well, yeah. So move all attributes, good. And I want to adjust the composition duration to the time span of the selected layers. And that just means that it won't have a bunch of empty space at the beginning. It'll just start right where my playhead is. Okay, that's where the group is going to start in the timeline. And I'm not going to open the new composition. It's easy enough to do that on your own. So I'm going to hit OK. And if I double click this, you can see that we have our hole and our shadow together. Okay, so if I go back to here, this was a color burn. And now that looks sort of like what it was supposed to, but not quite because you see this shadow, now it's got like this yellow tinge to it. So I'm gonna go back to normal. And um, I'm noticing if I turn on this little switch here, and I got to the switches again, just by clicking this little toggle switches and modes thing, if I come over here and I click that, 
now everything looks the way it did in the original, which is really nice. Okay, now I want this guy to fade on, but I also want it to have like a little blurring to it. And that can be really interesting. So what I usually do is I, I put the blur on it first and then I add the fade later. So in my effects and presets, I'm gonna type in Gaussian blur. So this effects and presets it has like a little Google search box, but unlike Google, it's not gonna correct your spelling. So make sure you spell your words carefully. If you're poor at spelling, it's not your fault. Just go into Google, type it in, Google will correct you and then copy paste that into here, okay? So I'm just gonna use the Gaussian blur that's listed under blur and sharpen. Notice I didn't type the whole thing and it still found it. So I'm going to have that pre-composition layer selected and double click Gaussian blur. Now, if you're wondering what that little starburst is called, that starburst is called um, continuously rasterize, okay? And continuously rasterize just means that it's going to um, like do things in a particularly different order. It's a very, it's a very deep topic. So I noticed that when I added the Gaussian blur, this actually broke the continuously rasterize, which before I had that was, um, it was respecting my blending modes from inside, right? Because when I was in here and I had this set to color burn and then I came over here and then I was like, wait, why isn't that working anymore? There we go. See, when I put the Gaussian blur on it, it broke that, which stinks. So you could put the Gaussian blur inside and then that will remedy that problem. So I'm just gonna cut that Gaussian blur out of there. So this window that showed up, the effect controls window, it shows up whenever you um, apply an effect to a layer. And if you can't see it or you don't know where it is, you can always go to the window menu and choose um, from this second section, um, effect controls. Okay, cool. So I don't want this Gaussian blur here, so I'm just gonna cut it out. And then I'm gonna go into PC Hole and I'm just gonna take that whole layer and paste the effect to it. Okay, and let's see if that still looks nice. Yep, it still looks good. I'm gonna go back to PC Hole and I'm gonna increase my blur, okay? I'm gonna increase it and as I increase it, I'm also going to turn on this thing called Repeat Edge Pixels which is a good habit to get into because otherwise you might notice that the effect like falls off on the edge. So repeat edge pixels, come on, okay. And I think that that's like a decent amount of blur to start off with. So I'm going to rewind and I'm gonna turn on the blurriness stopwatch, which is actually here in the effect controls. Does this make sense so far? If you have any questions, type them into the comments or type them into the chat. Okay, so here is my blurriness. And then I'm gonna advance to like about 12 frames from now, or maybe 10. So if I click this time code and I type in plus 10, then I can change the blurriness amount to zero. Remember, you only click that stopwatch once. I don't care where it is. So if I just click that and type zero, now it's changed back. And if I slide my playhead, you can see that it started blurry and then it got sharper. But where are these keyframes? We can't see them. Aha, entering a new hotkey, you're gonna hit letter U. So if you hit letter U with any layer selected, it's gonna show you all the keyframes that are on that layer in the timeline. If you have no layers selected, matter of fact, it'll show you all the keyframes on all the layers, which is really nice. So I have this and I want the fade to coincide with this, okay? So if I have my playhead here on the second keyframe, let me just show you one of the preferences that I find makes a huge difference. Um, notice I didn't start with preferences. That's because they're boring. But uh, we also didn't really need them for this one. So I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to go up to general. And in the general preferences, I'm going to make sure that synchronized time of all related items is turned on. Synchronized time just means that, hey, we are, um, when I'm inside a group, the time is gonna match whatever's on the outside of the group. 
and After Effects is hung. Oh, there we go. Thank you, After Effects, for not hanging up on me. So right here, synchronized time of all related items. Awesome. I'm going to hit OK. And when I go back to Collage Anim, I can drag this playhead and I can see that it starts off kind of blurry and then it gradually gets sharper. Now notice that my shadow looks kind of gross here. Like the edge of the shadow is like really sharp for no reason. So just go into the um, PC, whatever, whatever, rewind, click the word Gaussian blur and copy it. And we're gonna select the shadow layer and we're gonna paste the effect onto that also. Now again, the reason why we're putting the Gaussian blur inside the pre-composition was because we were running into issues with continuously rasterize otherwise. Oh, that looks so much better. So this is what it was before. Even at full resolution, it's gonna look gross. Uh, yeah, it just feels weird because everything else is blurred. Like why isn't the edge of the whole blurred? So then this is it with the There should be a redo. Where are you redo? Oh, I can't redo. Too bad. So over here, clicking Gaussian blur. So I'm inside of PC hole, clicking Gaussian blur, playhead all the way to the beginning. I'm gonna copy that. Then I'm gonna select the shadow and I'm gonna paste. Okay, and when I go back to here, it's gonna be nice and soft. All right, cool. So I'm gonna add my fade on this layer. Let me just change my zoom to fit and I'm going to change my resolution back to half just so that way my computer doesn't like get too upset. So right here I'm going to hit T for opacity and turn on the opacity and then I'm going to rewind and I'm going to change this opacity down to zero. So let's play back what we have so far, right? So we had our background, paint BG, and our PC hole all animated here. So that came on and then it kind of jumped. So I'm just gonna rewind and play it back again. Okay, so let's just come over here. And why is that? There we go. So that has to be at a, like totally 0%. And then if I want to advance frame by frame, I can actually hold the command key down and hit the right arrow on my keyboard. Now that was really fast, right? Like the fade happened super fast. So if I select that first keyframe and I right click keyframe assist easy ease, it's actually gonna start much slower. So now command right arrow, it's still a little fast. So right here, maybe I'll just change this to like 10 or 1 or 0 0.1, 0.1. Wow, that like really liked to pop. That's very strange. So that happens sometimes that you'll end up with like just a weird little fluke like that. And then you just want to like mess with your values until you get something nicer. Um, or you can try some other way of getting your layer to come on screen. So I'm just gonna, instead of doing a fade on this layer, I'm gonna do a fade on a layer above. Sometimes that can work, okay? So similar to what we did, with the mat on the lady, we're going to do the same thing on this layer. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this layer. I just hit letter I for in point and I'm going to go to layer new solid. And a solid layer is just a like a solid color layer that After Effects makes that's a rectangle or a square. I'm going to make it composition size and any color is fine. And I'm going to call this whole reveal mat. And I'm going to bring up that blending modes column once more. And I'm going to change the track mat to alpha mat whole reveal mat. 
Okay. Oh, rats. Let's see. This is just like not being my friend today. I don't understand why. Let's go over here. Let's set you to color burn. And yeah, so this is kind of, I mean, this is getting kind of fussy, right? So if that happens to you that you're like, dude, why is this getting so fussy? What do I do about this? There is a way around it. And that way involves going back to Photoshop briefly. So just going back to Photoshop here and I have my whole layer, right? So I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna change the blending mode to normal, okay? I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna merge these guys together. Let's see if that doesn't work. So merging them together, so just this empty layer, selecting them both, and then Command E to merge. And I'm gonna call this whole merged. And I'm gonna do color burn. Is it color dodge? It's color dodge. Let me just double check in my After Effects what method that was. So here we go color burn it was on hmm. okay and oh I actually had it here also so this guy was on color burn so oh it's because I didn't turn off the visibility there so this guy should be on color burn yeah and that works great I think that's going to be fine so I'm going to bring in just that layer I think that's going to make all the difference so let's just save this and I just made that brand new layer by duplicating. Notice I didn't overwrite any of the existing layers because otherwise After Effects would go completely nuts. I duplicated the whole layer. I connect, uh, merged it to a blank layer and then renamed that whole shebang, whole merged. And then I'm gonna resave it just to be on the safe side. So I don't screw anything up, I'm gonna resave it with the number one at the end. Um, hold on. My save window appears to have disappeared. Just a moment. There it is. It was on the wrong window. There we go. Okay, bear with me now. So I'm gonna add just a one at the end just so that way I don't mess up my original, okay? And going back to After Effects, I'm gonna import that layer and just add an opacity fade on that, okay? So let's, del let's just turn off these two guys, okay? And in my project window, I can import pretty easily, just File, Import, and I make sure that nothing's selected in the um, project window, because otherwise what happens is, like if I have a folder selected and I import, it puts that thing into the folder, which is a problem. So I'm gonna go import file. Then I'm gonna choose that guy, import as footage this time, and I'm gonna hit open. And instead of composition retain layer sizes, I'm gonna choose footage. And I'm gonna choose from my choose layer option here, I'm gonna choose whole merged. Okay, and I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna take this guy down here, right on top of whole reveal mat. I'm gonna set this to color burn. So much easier and better to have it that way. And then I can add my Gaussian blur and I can add my fade all to that one layer. Okay, so let's copy and right here. Let's paste. So that was nice. We just learned how to import a single file. So now that's our Gaussian blur. And if I hit letter T, remember, I can bring up my opacity property. Turn on the stopwatch there, change that to zero, and then advance forward. And it's okay if it ad advances after the other layers start to come in, and there's 100%, okay? So that should look pretty nice. We have our paint coming on with a fade 
and then the the hole and stuff comes on with like this kind of uh, like fade and blur at the same time. I don't know where my shadow went. That's super weird. Let me change this to normal. Oh, my shadow didn't come in. So I can just go back to Photoshop, try it again. It was supposed to be connected with the shadow. So I'm just gonna select whole merged, shift select shadow, command E and save again and color burn. Oh, interesting. So that gave me like a red, which was weird. So back to After Effects, I guess I'll just have to have my hole, my shadow come on separately. So supposing you have pre-composed some stuff and you're like, how do I get it out? You can just go into the pre-composition, select the shadow layer and Assuming you didn't move this layer at all in this pre-composition at all um, in the main comp, I can just copy that. Go back to collage and in. Make sure that I'm got my playhead right where I want it. And I can select the layer that I want to paste above. And then I paste. Okay, and there's that shadow. Just moving it so it starts there. And I'm gonna copy paste my opacity. So I click the word opacity, and this is cool because if you click the word of the property you want to copy, it selects all the keyframes on it, and then I can just copy those, and then I can select the shadow, and I can paste. Okay, and now we have that, and it appears that my shadow got moved a little bit, so I'll just have to move it over a little. And the shadow feels a little dark, right? So I'm just using my arrow keys to move where the shadow is falling. All right, that's pretty good. And I can just hit T for opacity and just double click that second keyframe and it brings up an opacity window where I can change the value. So maybe I could change it to 40 or better yet, let's try 20. Yeah, that looks nice and subtle. And if I go back to my Photoshop file, I can see that my whole merged doesn't have the shadow on it. Let's just save. Okay, cool. So going back to After Effects, any weirdness should go away. Now, sometimes when you relink a file, it does cause a little bit of an issue. In which case you can just um, like, what's it called? Refresh your, your file a little bit. So this shadow, this layer right here, whole merged, it's right here in my project window. If I right click and I go to reload footage, it's gonna reload it from its source. And that looks so much better because I had at one point saved it with the shadow. Okay, so now we have both of those things happening. Sorry, that took a little while. We want our texture thing to come in next and we don't want it to just pop, we want it to slide. So I'm gonna advance my playhead to like 55 frames and I'm gonna hit P for position and just turn on the position stopwatch at that point because that's where I want the thing to end up, okay? And let's just zoom out. I can zoom out with my trackpad, trackball or scroll wheel and I'm just gonna move that. But the way that I'm moving, whoops, undo. So I, I have it set right at 55 and then I'm gonna go to the beginning of the layer and then I'm gonna move it. It's helpful to turn off snapping and then you can just move it like so. Moving, 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 there we go. And I'm gonna give that second keyframe an ease so that it slows down right there. So let's play that back. So we have our Okay, so that looked pretty good. Um, I wanna have the 
water, well, the, the fence layer is also gonna fade. I liked the pacing from the hole, so I'm gonna hit U to get the opacity keyframes on that. And I can actually select the blur and opacity at the same time. I mean, why not? And I can just, so I drew a box around them, see that? So dragging over and down, starting from an area where there's no keyframe, so I don't accidentally move anybody. And then I'm gonna copy, okay. Then I'm gonna select this fence and I'm going to paste. And the keyframes paste wherever your playhead is. So if your playhead was in some random spot, you're not gonna see your animation happen with the right timing, okay? All right, so after all that happens, our water thing comes up. And I want the water thing to, um, I basically want it to like kind of wipe on a little bit. Um, nah, I'm not gonna have it wipe, I'm gonna have it fade. So we'll just do the opacity from the other layer. So copying all that, making sure that my playhead is right where the water thing layer starts, okay? And please, if you have any questions, just type them into the chat or the comments. So here we have that, and I'm just going to select my opacity only. I'm gonna copy my opacity, select that water thing, and I'm gonna paste. Okay, so now the water thing fades on like that. But it faded so dark, ew! <laughs> what happened was, if I hit T for opacity, I can see that the opacity of this was only at 29, it wasn't at 100. So when I pasted those opacity keyframes, they started at zero and they ended at 100 and that's just too intense. So again, you can always double click that final keyframe and I'm just gonna change that back to 29. And there, that looks so much more subtle and nice. Okay, cool. So we're almost finished here. I've gotta take my sticker and the sticker, I'm gonna have it like peel on, okay? And for this, I'm gonna use an effect called page turn. So in your effects and presets window, you're just gonna type into the search bar, page, and you're looking for the one that's called CC page turn, okay? And I placed my playhead at like 80, uh, 85 frames, why not? And I'm gonna double click on CC page turn so that it applies to my love songs. And I want this to start from the other side. So I'm gonna go like that. Um, let's see. And I don't want it from the bottom right corner, so I have to change the controls here. So instead of bottom right, I'm gonna do bottom left, okay? I want the back opacity to be 100%, and I want the back page to actually be set to none. See how it says back page? Right now we're seeing the reverse, I don't want that. So I'm gonna set that to none. And what that means is it's gonna choose from this color here, okay? So this is the color. And if I click that little color chip, I can take the eyedropper and come over here and just pick out like a color like that and then use my little slider on the saturation to go down a little bit and on the brightness to go up a little bit. And that, see how that starts to look a little bit more like the back of a sticker? Okay, and then I'm gonna also increase the fold radius. And the fold radius um, is talking about like the distance, like how rounded it is, okay? So let's change the light direction as well. So we get a little bit of shine on it, but not too much. And we can control it using this little guy. So see how it says fold position? If you just click on that little crosshair right here, you can come over and you can control how the sticker comes on 
just by peeling like that. Peel, 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 peel. Now I'm not thrilled with this drop shadow. I think it looks kind of silly. So I can go into my layer. I can locate layer styles and I can just turn it off. I can always add a drop shadow later on, okay? So I'm gonna have this start up here. And you can always quickly get to the start point of a layer by just hitting letter I on your keyboard. And then I can turn on the stopwatch up here in the effect controls by clicking on fold position, okay? Next, I'm going to hit letter U so I can see that keyframe in my timeline. And I'm gonna advance just like, 86 maybe so 75 let's keep it round to 87 so that's 12 frames it's half a second and I'm just gonna take that fold position which if you lose it it's easy to click on it and then you can move that guy like so all right that's not too bad and if I play this back That's not terrible. So maybe I also want to add a little bit of position to this. Um, you don't have to, but you might want to, because right now it just sort of, whoops, if I start it from here, stop. So you can start your work area playback thingy by just dragging this little blue bracket, and then it'll just start from that point. And I just want like a couple of frames for this to land here. So if I just take my playhead and I drag it like, I don't know, like a half or a third into that peeling on, I can hold the shift key and type P for position. And then I can turn on the position stopwatch. And I'm doing this for like, I'm putting the position keyframe at the point in time where I want the thing to end. Like this is where I want this to stop. And then I'm gonna go back a little bit and I'm just gonna move this with the selection tool. Now notice your bounding box is way the crap over here. So you just sort of have to like move it out the way like this and trust that it's gonna go in the right spot. This last keyframe can totally get an easy ease. And an easy ease, if you're unfamiliar, it just means that it's gonna slow down as it gets there. So if I just hit the space bar, that's pretty cool. I quite like that. So in case you missed it, let me just rewind a bit. Okay, I think that looks nice. One thing I wanna add to that is just a touch of drop shadow. So in the effects and presets, I'm gonna type in drop shadow double click and the default drop shadow isn't terrible but I actually want the shadow direction to be off to the lower left increase the softness just a touch like just like two or three maybe and increase the distance to about like I would do nine and so something like that so I did 213 9 and 3 here but my opacity i'm going to drop to like 30 and that just makes it like a bunch more subtle okay all right so now comes my favorite part and oh i'm starting to see <laughs> that my um my hole merged it's actually in slightly a different spot than my lady so let me select the lady mat and the lady no mat and just shift those over. So I'm just using my shift and arrow keys on my keyboard to move the lady and her mat into the proper place. Okay, all right. So we wanted her to come in in the end, right? We want her to just sort of like migrate into place. I like the mat where it is, so I'm not gonna touch that, but the, la the, the layer that's called Lady No Mat, I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna hit P, and then hold the Shift key and type T, 
T. So now I have position and opacity at the same time. And if I turn on both and then I rewind to the beginning of the layer, I can drop my opacity to zero and I can move the lady over. Now the problem is you don't want to animate opacity first because otherwise you can't see what you're doing. So I'm just going to select Lady No Mat, hold the shift key and use my left arrow to move her out of the way. Now that seems like it might end up being really fast, but we'll see. I'm going to select my last two keyframes here, right click, keyframe assist, easy ease. Okay, so hitting space bar to play it back. All right, let's try again. Yeah, and that's way too fast. So I'm gonna take these two keyframes at the end here and just move them later. So it's gonna take, like if I started at 91, and I add, let's just do a 24 frame move. So plus 24 and then another 12. Yeah, so it's about a second and a half. And I think that's gonna look pretty nice. All right, cool. So, that is pretty good. And if I just rewind all the way to the beginning and I move my work area start, so you can hit home to get to the beginning of your work area and then hit B, and B is going to set the beginning of your work area. And I'm just gonna hit space bar to play that back. Okay, now if you wanted to switch the order of your animation a little bit, you totally could. Just take your lady, perhaps, and move her so she starts at 75 frames. And then take your sticker and have that start a little later. So now, if I start from here, the lady starts to move in. And then we find out that this is about love songs. And I think that looks pretty good. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with this and I'm ready to export it. So I'm gonna give us just a little bit of time after the whole thing's over for people to read it before it starts over again with white. So placing my playhead where I think I want this thing to end and hitting letter N, then going to the beginning of my timeline and hitting letter B, now I have my whole work area defined and I'm hitting space bar to play it back and it's playing from RAM and I can see that it's real time right here. And you don't want it to hang out on that last thing for too long, otherwise it starts to look kind of boring. So maybe I wanna just shorten this up. So I'm gonna take my playhead and place it at like 175, let's say, or so, and then hit letter N. And I think that's gonna make it better. So you can also click the time code right here to define where you want the thing to end. And then I'm gonna hit letter N, okay? And spacebar, and that should be pretty nice. So I'm realizing, yeah, that now we are ready to export this thing. So let's do that. Um, and to export, we're gonna save first. So Command S or Control S if you're on a PC. And then you're just gonna go to File Menu, Export, Add to Render Queue. And I always add to the Render Queue first and then I, um, add it to media encoder from that, just so that I know when I sent it to export. Right here in this render queue window, if you click on the blue file path next to output two, you can go over 
to your um, export folder. So here's my PS collage. Inside of that, I have exports, and I'm just gonna call this collage version one movie. Hit save. Then I'm gonna click on Q in AME, which means Q in Adobe Media Encoder. Now, if you don't have Media Encoder open, it's gonna take a few minutes to actually open the program. If you do have it open, it should add it automatically over here into the Q on the right-hand side. Now, these default settings should work fine for Instagram. You can, of course, turn off the audio just by clicking the match source high bitrate and just turning off the audio option. I was having a little bit of trouble with Media Encoder the other day, so I'm hoping that isn't gonna happen this time. And sometimes this dynamic link connection can take a little while. So I'm gonna skip it for now. Um, suffice it to say, you can easily enough just do your export right here, and you can always change where it's gonna save by clicking on this file path, and click on the playback. Sorry, the, it's like a little play looking button. See this? It's like a little green thingy. It says it's ready. It's thinking about it. And then it should export to that folder. And remember to upload to Instagram, you do need to um, either use the Facebook business suite and upload to Instagram through that. Alternatively, you can email the file to yourself and then on your phone, you can download that MP4 file and upload it to the Instagram app through your phone. Okay, so this is taking a little while, but if you have any questions on what I've done today, please drop them into the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. If you get stuck on any aspect of this, please let me know. I'm actually gonna upload a simpler version of this Photoshop file in addition to the one that's already on the zip file in case if you just wanna do the keyframes and whatnot and you don't wanna mess with like going into Photoshop and merging things down and so on. But I wanted to thank you for joining me. I hope to see you at a future live stream. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, my social links are in the description, okay? So thanks again, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Take care.